And here we are in the bottom right hand corner of Antigua Shipyard. From the team TSL, it is the Red Zerg player, 12 time winner of IPL Fight Club, Hyun. $6,300. I wonder what he's done with it. It's a lot of money. His opponent spawning in the top left, looking to take home $1,700 if he can secure the series today. Guys, from the team MVP, the Blue Protoss player, Finale. And Finale, just one game away from tying things up after that kind of crazy game number five. Um, of course, excuse me, decided to go for a decidedly different late game scenario. It's kind of a passive game, honestly, um, as both players just kind of Man, excuse me again, I apologize. Uh, stabilized and then got to the point where they're like, okay, well, you know, we're not going to kill each other initially, so let's just sit back, let's take some time, let's build up our late game armies. And Hyun, not too unpredictable, said, I'm going to make 19 Broodlords and 38 Investors. That's that's a thing. It works against most armies. But the problem was, was that Finale decided to bypass kind of that conventional Archon, Colossus, Charge Lot, Mothership army, and actually replace the vast majority of his supply with Void Rays. He had 15 of them, I think, at the very end, and uh, it ended up working out perfectly. Yeah, it, it was uh, quite an engagement to behold, in all honesty. Ooh, nice job out of Finale. Look at him denying this mineral patch, um, making sure. Guys, uh, you want to not mine the actual minerals when you're doing this, um, because then you can't continue mining. And basically all it, uh, it really comes down to is you can only have one worker actually mining a mineral patch at any given time. Um, so if you make it that your probe is always mining the mineral patch, well, then they can't ever mine it. Uh, so it's, it's pretty difficult to do, an ex ex uh, especially for an extended period of time. Uh, but it looks like the hatchery is going to go down again uh, for Hyun. And, of course, Finale never seeming to want to commit to the pylon in order to block it. Uh, it just seems to be a style of play. And, whoa, he misclicked a little bit there. He had set the Nexus to go down and actually pulled back away. Uh, the great irony of that being when he finally did get it put down, he had uh, 85 minerals saved up, which is, whoa, we got, okay, not really sure what that was. Must have actually backed up just a couple of seconds. Sorry about that, guys. Wonder how that happened. Anyway, um, and the, so the great irony was that he had 85 minerals left over, and he could have put down the pylon, only would have been 15 minerals behind or about half a second, so could have actually blocked his opponent for a bit longer there. But, mm -hmm. oh, well, it's small little things. No, uh, absolutely, uh, I, I, I mean, of course, you know, it's because the missed the snacks. Just click it too fast there, man. Take a look at these guys' APM. 270 right now for Finale. I mean, his fingers are actually heating up from the clicking uh, to a noticeable degree. And Hyun's a player, he's obviously playing at a high APM, 225 right now, but he's a guy who's like, oh, okay, I'm just going to take it easy, take it easy for a while. Wait, there's a fight happening? Here's a thousand. So, <laughs> um, not quite a thousand, but you know. Oh, completely valued. They, they, they'd get to a degree where if you touch somebody's face, they'd be like, how? Yeah. But if you like blew on them first and then caressed a woman's face, she'd be like, huh? Yeah, then it would feel like just a warm, soothing touch. Uh, ex so. Exactly, she'd melt. Yeah. That's the concept behind it. One of the pro gamers, man. Yeah. Everybody thinks they're so popular because this is a pro gamers, but it's actually because they have hot hands. Ah. They're really, they make great masseuses, too. Do they? Yeah. Yes. I don't know if I'd want a 1,000 APM uh, massage, <laughs> honestly, on my back. <laughs> I prefer four. The percussive part of the massage. There's the yes. three, three steps to a massage, right? There's the uh, kneading, the compression, and the percussion. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. I didn't have a clue, so I'm nodding and agreeing because um, and that should tell you how how not smooth of a person I am in real <laughs> life. I, I don't have a clue about that, so I kind of just like I just rub my wife's back for a while and just hope it works. So that's <laughs> that's the extent if of you my massage. If moans that sound comforting, yes. you're good. I use hand warmers, though. I cheat. I cannot click a keyboard fast enough, so uh. yeah. I'm not, I was, I was, that was one of my, my lacking points. But, uh, guys, third base down for Hyun at this stage. Uh, MVP finale going to be grabbing his third gas, on the other hand. Yeah, and we mentioned all the different gas timings he's had. But this is another one. It's actually totally separate from what he's had over the past. And important to note that he's making the Stalker and Warp Gate technology and delaying plus one weapons again. So he gets his first two gas at about the right time, gets his third gas a, a little bit earlier, and delays his fourth. And I want to know what the purpose is going to be. The first time I think we've seen Twilight Council before any other hint of tech, and he cleverly puts it in a spot uh, that the Overlord had just scouted and isn't likely to return to. Yeah, this is uh, really, really interesting, actually, out of Finale, because pretty much every game so far he's been opening up uh, with sentries, uh -huh. and this time he doesn't. So, I mean, going for Stalkers and a really, really fast Twilight Council, um, some, I mean, in many cases I would say it's a predicator for Dark Templar. 
Uh, he's only on three gases, so with plus one, I'm leaning away from that. Uh, Blink definitely more of a possibility. But it does surprise me because Blink is so phased out of popularity as we see that the Blink is going to be starting up here. Um, it's, it's really just lost its prevalence ever since Zerg started getting really fast thirds. Of course, there are very powerful, uh, big 7k Blink timings. Uh, but they're just, they're really good against fat or uh, later thirds from Zergs. And now every Zerg pretty much goes for faster basis. It's because we're on Antigua Shipyard, though. I mean, like, I, yeah. I, I feel like this is because of the map. So, um, I mean, obviously, this is one of the older maps that's still used in tournament play and such. So, um, and we are actually rotating map pool soon. I don't think this one is up yet for rotation, although it's coming pretty soon. Um, looks like Zergling is going to try and chase these units off. Not really going to be able to do anything about that. And it is going to be a 7-8 blink push. Uh, but, but this map does lend itself to those sorts of plays, especially if you can get any sort of vision up on the high ground. You can just blink in, navigate around, and frustrate your Zerg opponent quite a bit. Of course, it's very all-in because you set yourself Ooh. not just behind in bases, but also in tech and really every aspect. He saw it. Hyun saw the probe. Kills the probe, kills the pylon as well, and another probe is going to have to be sent out here for Finale. Even though three of his gateways have already finished, the other four are just about to near completion. Plus one is done. Uh, Blink is going to be done any second. He does not have the, uh, the necessary uh, items in place here. No, he does not have the pylon. He does not have uh, even a probe out on the field that has started one up yet. It's going to be so long, and this gives Hyun so much time to prepare for this. And Hyun's already got a lot of units making his way out. In fact, he pushes units, or he pushes the uh, probe off of the high ground there just to make sure you can get this down. But little does he know, there's an Overlord sitting right there that has vision of the forward pylon. So Hyun uh, says, okay, I know it's coming, and I'm going to make a billion units, so you have no way to hurt me in this engagement. I would like to see Hyun go and kill that pylon, though, because he doesn't have speed. And speed is such an important element in combating Blink Stalker all ins. This is a seven gate Blink Stalker, guys. It's a very powerful build. Uh, and honestly, you can just keep units alive forever if you don't have a way to pursue them. Now, he is going to have roaches with speed, but they actually don't catch Blink Stalkers. Um, they only catch normal Stalkers. That's right. Um, both of these speed upgrades are pretty far away, and Finale's able to get out of there, only loses one Stalker and cleans up a lot of Zerglings. You can see all the carcasses on the ground. Uh, he may... I, I actually want to find out if he blinked that last Stalker now or not, I, because, I mean, it may have come down to that, and if he blinked it, I mean... The control out of Finale, we were talking about this earlier, um, his finesse abilities, being able to like load units into a warp prism right as they're, he loads them as they're getting shot. Like, no kidding, guys, they actually won't take damage. Mm -hmm. um, he's just so incredibly good with these things, but one of the things he's not good at, apparently, is hiding all ins, as Hyun has just smelled this out so incredibly well. And I think Finale's trying to switch gears here. He still has some plus two weapons coming up, but robotics uh, facility is finishing. He's got zealots and sentries mixed into this. I think he eventually wants to take a third base here behind a couple of immortals, but the problem is, is he's given Hyun so much time to be able to establish control of the map. Hyun can just kill this uh, destructible debris, oh, continue wow. putting pressure on the third while he goes for uh, infestors, and then it's just going to have complete dominance of the mid game. You know, I was thinking, um, Finale, I mean, as you're saying, he, he can't take a third. He cannot take a third. Like, it's it's really not going to happen. If it does, it's going to happen so late that Hyun's going to be too far ahead. Um, I'm wondering if Finale wants to try to make a big... Well, no, he, he is recommencing probe production, in all, in all honesty. So I guess the third is the option he's going to opt for here. But um, I would not have been surprised by a big two-base play. Uh, and, and the reality is, is that Hyun is completely prepared for it. He started up an infestation pit immediately after all of that, uh, all after that combat did go down. And, I mean, he's already got Path into Glens on the way. If Finale were to go for a big Sentry, Stalker, Zealot, Immortal timing here with plus two, he would be met with Fungal Growth. Yeah. Uh, which is so powerful versus heavy Sentry-based timing. So, uh, yeah, he's going to try to take that third, but that's going to put Hyun in a really, really nice position uh, as he's now taking a fourth base, in fact. And looks like Hyun is just going to power down the Destructible Debris. This is what we kind of figured would happen. And now he finally picks up on it. Finale going to try and defend... Uh, for all he can, but the issue is, of course, that Hyun is in a pretty decent position. Fortunately, Supply Block needs to make two Overlords there so we can finish up and free all the rest of his supply. That is actually kind of unfortunate because he'd like to rally that in to the front as soon as possible, and it's going to delay the second set of Infestors by another 20 seconds or so. Yeah, no, definitely true. Um, we are seeing armor, a relatively quick armor research here out of Finale as opposed to going for the plus three weapons. Um, so the incorporation of some Zealots and continued Immortals, not out of the realm of possibility. Uh, we do see a nice corruption going down, preventing production of said Immortal. But uh, yeah, of course, guys, you know, 
Colossi that kind of stand in the back, so it's really beneficial to have plus three weapons if you're going to opt for them. Uh, but if you're going to start incorporating a lot of something like charge lots or um, really just units that get into the fray, get into the mess, uh, the armor upgrades extremely beneficial. Uh, as we do see, yeah, the Templar Archives is going to go down and warping in more zealots, and now he's going to be able to start making some Archons as well in the near future. Now, of course, Spire and Hive are on the way for Hyun, so he's moving pretty aggressively into his Tier 3 tech. He's got four bases, he's got eight gas, he may even just take another base down here in the bottom left-hand corner. He's got so many minerals around, yes, he'll be able to reproduce his army very quickly in the event that something terrible happens, but uh, I would not be surprised to see him just kind of take the map at this stage of the game. Uh, small investor count here for Hyun right now. I'm uh, a little bit surprised by that. You know, he's got two. He's got a couple on the way, though, um, as well. Yeah, four across the map right now. Two also currently in production. So uh, is going to be ramping that up. And that's, of course, consequence to that early pressure that we saw um, out of Finale, where he tried to seal the, the deal really early. But, wow, Finale's just up against the ropes right now, guys. Hyun trying to make something happen with a dual-pronged attack. Force Field's going to stop the attack on the lower half. The top, uh, top half of this... Blinks up the Stalkers to go for the engagement. Force Field down on the low ground. Fungal Growth going to catch a lot of the Zealots here. They're able to do nothing. Immortals in the back firing away on the uh, Roaches. The Stalkers are kind of spread everywhere right now. And this is just really, really tedious for uh, Finale to set up an appropriate defense. But he seems to be doing okay here as Hyun's the one really dipping in supply, trapping a couple of these units with some Force Fields. And it looks like Keanu was trying to make a decision there. He just finished Hive. He just finished Spire. And uh, he was like, wait a second. What do I want to make right now? 53 roaches. That, that's what I want to make. I just want to instantly remax because I had that amount of larvae available. So he makes 53 roaches at the same time, and uh, he does consciously decide to move into plus one missile attacks. So um, he's committing to this for a little while. And there is an opportunity for Finale, if he can cost efficiently hold, to start to kind of catch back up and tech to, to find some sort of equalization. But the problem is, is that Hyun has such an ability to reproduce off of four bases right now with the good injects that he's had, that it's going to be extremely difficult for Finale to find any significant footing. Yeah, I think Hyun was actually fearing a counterattack there. I mean, as you just pulled up the resources lost tab there, it was massively in Finale's favor. I mean, he's barely lost anything at this stage, um, barring, you know, the initial stalker waves and a couple of units there in that fight. Um, and, I mean, now we're at a stage, 167 supply to a maxed out Hyun. Hyun needs to push again because his greater spire's on the way. He's got a lot of money. Here we go. Force fields, are they going to go down? You know, the sentry's trying to get into position. Beautiful force fields for what he had available. Um, the sentries couldn't simply get close enough, so he, he got a lot of units cleaned up there. Uh, 30 supply, in fact, and lost almost nothing. Hyun's really got to watch out because he's given a, a Finale a really good opportunity to claw his way back into this game. Uh, he's going to catch the Observer, which is a nice touch, and looks like a second Fungal Growth will actually finish that off. But Finale has the potential to push here soon, and uh, he's going to make his way into the fourth base. Now, of course, he has to watch out about the possibility of Hyun just kind of running by and doing damage, um, but Finale's done a pretty good job for himself, not just stabilizing, but uh, also starting to eke out not an advantage, but equalization. Oh, but that was terrible for Finale. He gets all of his forces caught when half of his were actually out of position, loses some forces up at the front. However, he has a good enough concave with these immortals running around the top, and that's where the bulk of his army is actually coming in, that Hyun's not able to get the sustained damage he needs done in time. And now, Hyun's actually in a really bad spot. Yeah, I mean, the upgrades right now, Kevin, you mentioned it last game. Hyun on zero, zero, zero. Finale sitting on plus two attack, plus one armor. Now plus two armor's done. Hyun has no chance of holding this off without any upgrades. He's got no Broodlords on the way right now. Just 22 more Roaches, which are easily going to fall to the incredibly powerful forces right now of Finale. Almost no chance as he's now going to easily sweep over the third and then push into this natural. I mean, how are we at the 19-minute mark and Hyun has no upgrades whatsoever? I absolutely can't believe it. No, I mean, this is just staggering. It's, it's. I mean, Hyun had such a nice advantage in this game, and uh, he spent pretty much the rest of the time uh, handing it back to Finale. And Finale's able to stabilize, and now moving forward, and he's just going to outright finish the game here. Guys, we're going to have a tight series in a second. As uh, third base goes down, G -G. that's it, GG, and Finale's tied it up. Uh, all right. Well, we went from 3-1 to 3-3. Finale really pulling it back right now. Um, and I, But I, I got to say, a lot of it is consequence to some mistakes out of Hyun. Uh, Finale, of course, playing very crisp, very clean game. But for instance, I mean, he opened that up with a 7-gate blink stalker that got scouted right away. Yeah. 
And, um, you know, he was able to transition out of it, though, and Hyun never really kept on the pressure. What I thought Hyun was going to do, I thought Hyun was going to take the fourth base. I thought he was going to take up two investors, which he did. I thought he was going to then immediately break down the uh, rocks over to the third and just consistently put on pressure. But by the time he decided to put on pressure, he was against an opponent's army that had the capability to split up his forces and defend, which is exactly what he did. Yeah, yeah. No, I actually, think about that part where he split the army towards the bottom. He's brought the other half towards the top. And then he started attacking with the zealots on the hatchery uh, at the fourth base. And he kind of forced Hyun to come down and, and, and uh, engage that. But, um, you know, I, I think the path there for Hyun, actually, um, just r r realizing this, he dropped the spire, went to Hive, wanted to go to Greater Spire, attacked to throw away some forces, lost actually a little more supply than he wanted to lose, mm -hmm. and was fearing the counterattack out of... Um, and, and he probably also didn't expect to have such a, a terrible loss with not really doing any damage to Finale. Fin and he was fearing the counterattack out of Finale, which is where we saw the 53 Roaches. He right. said, panic mode, 53 Roaches, even though I want to make Broodlords right now, 53 Roaches, because I don't want to die. And then all of a sudden, well, then he had 53 Roaches to defend a 2-2 Protoss ball. Yeah. And then it was over. Yep. There it is. So uh, GG Finale ties things up. We're going to move into the next game here in just a second, which is going to be Daybreak. Weird. Usually you don't see Game 7 as the, the setting for this map. Usually it happens yeah. a little bit quicker. So we are going to run to a commercial break. Um, while you're away, don't forget to check out all the information about the Lone Star Clash 2 that's actually happening this weekend. Uh, we're really looking forward to it. The Tespa yeah. folks are amazing. Um, you can actually head over to tespa.org slash LSC2, the number two. So again, Tespa org slash LSC2 for more information. In addition to that, there's also a lot of cool information on Team Liquid, Liquipedia, etc. So check it out. Awesome event happening this weekend, League of Legends and StarCraft 2. Yeah, I, I really, I want to point, uh, like reiterate, that's a great event. I had the opportunity to cast for them in the past, and, the, and everybody in the organization, I, I was a remote caster, um, mm -hmm. not like at the main stage or anything, but they were so incredibly helpful at the organization. Everybody's so kind, um, which is, I mean, really, it's it, it, for an event that's put together by a, a bunch of people from college it's really a testament to how hard they're willing to work to put it together so make sure you support them uh this weekend for that fantastic event i just want to voice my complete and utter agreement with kevin here well there you go if he says it then it must be so so you guys go support that event uh also of course we're giving away this week a set of gutter glasses here this is actually the ppk version and uh their lime series uh reflects the color of the glasses themselves if you want to win those head over to ign.com slash ipl giveaways it's at the top of your screen again ign.com slash ipl giveaways a contest is open until sunday so that is going to be it for uh for this game we're going to run to a commercial break when we come back we'll see who breaks this tie in game number seven between tsl hyun and mvp finale